Hi guys, welcome back to our Globe Interviews. I am host Starlight, and today we are at the Paris Blockchain Week Summit. And today we have a very special guest with me, Ruben Merritt. He's the tech entrepreneur with focus on digital asset security and financial empowerment. He's the co-founder and CEO of Engrave, the creator of the Zero, the world of most security hardware wallets for the crypto storage. Please welcome Ruben. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you today? Pretty good. Pretty good. It's a very hefty conference out there today at Paris Blockchain Week. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you share a little bit about your background and how you get into the crypto world? Yeah, sure. So I spent uh, quite a bit of my of my of my professional life mm -hmm. um, solving problems that uh, are very important for the mass. For example, the last real project I did before starting Engrave was really focused on financial empowerment. So um, basically, making it possible for the random Joe next door mm -hmm. to have the same kind of access to wealth management services as uh, Bob, who might have five hundred thousand euros and he has his own private banker. Um, and since uh, 2018, I've actually been working on uh, giving better security to everyone in the crypto space. Wow. So um, you, you dive into this crypto world. It's like a really er early stage. Uh, yeah, I joined in like 2016, 2017. Um, actually saw Bitcoin f for the first time, I, w I would say in 2014, 15 maybe. But um, I studied a lot about financial markets uh, back in the day. And I was a bit brainwashed by the likes of Warren Buffett, who say like, stay away from bubbles, don't invest in uh, things you don't understand. And so in that sense, I, I looked at Bitcoin, I saw a bubble, but I never really looked closer. And the moment I did that, the moment I really opened uh, the hood and looked un underneath, mm -hmm. for me, that was the moment that I said like, wow, the, the potential of what blockchain technology can do is, is mind blowing. And then by the time I got in, I realized quite soon, mm -hmm. uh, based on experience that it was absolutely not safe to interact within the space. And so in 2018, we decided to, to change that and to actually fix the security issues. Uh, several different really big security conundrums we found that at, at this point, even today, don't really have a good answer, except if we look at what we've, what we've been building for the last four years. What does Engrave stand for and what inspires you all? we can say what drives you the most that you decided to build your own company? Yeah, so I think we feel in that uh, Engrave sort of, it's sort of a bit like, um, how do you say, it, it doesn't fully do the exact same thing as the rationale of crypto, which is like a lot of these comp companies come in or projects come in and they want to make money fast. And, and we, we are so purpose driven that we spent four years in an industry where everything goes super fast and one project explodes and then the next one comes and many people think about 10x tomorrow. So we spent, uh, we jump out of our bed every single day with the notion that we're going to make it safer for everybody who comes into the space. Mm -hmm. And so what drives us is really that. It's really like protecting people. So the last, my last company, so to say, that I had was about empowering people to have good uh, asset management uh, um, for everybody and now this and now with engrave it's more about how can we um, protect everybody in the space um, and, and 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 if you would summarize that to sort of a mission statement our mission is to empower you to master your wealth so that you can live the life you want so it's it's again about freedom right and yeah. um, for that you need a good way to actually own your wealth and be able to sleep at night yeah uh, which was a which was something we couldn't do four years ago what services <clears throat> or the products do yeah so um the moment in 2018, we, we asked ourselves uh, after a few very big uh, security uh, issues we had ourselves, like uh, Xavier, my, my co-founder, he, uh, with his previous project, was hacked for 44,000 ETH. Um, so it's a mind-blowing amount. And uh, in the aftermath of that, we started thinking about that stupid, very simple question, which was, okay, let's put all our crypto in one solution and we are able to sleep at night. Where would we, would we put it? We didn't have an answer to that question. So we decided to uh, build it ourselves and to focus on two main really important parts. So part one is we would never compromise on security. So uh, security needed to be maximum at all points. And two, it needed to be a 21st century product. So it needed to be super easy to use, uh, typically like the Apple vibe. Um, it needed to be swiping and tapping through your crypto and not like what you typically saw with incumbent hardware wallets uh, 
and so on to that, that, that made it very difficult to actually interact with the space. Um, and that resulted in a end-to-end -end product suite. So we start with creating a new kind of key. Mm -hmm. So it, the most important part of your, of your crypto journey is how do you actually create a strong key? Because if your key, your private public, if your private, if your private key is made well, is made badly, then you're already set up for failure before you actually start interacting with the space. So for us, that was step zero, and then step infinity, uh, more or less, uh, is when tomorrow you pass away, your kids need access to your crypto, and how do you, how do they get to your keys? And so all the steps in between, all the little security uh, conundrums in between, like how do I securely sign a transaction? Um, we, we took care of all those things. And we did that by building a three-tier product suite. Uh, the first one consists of zero, so that's this beautiful uh, hardware product. The zero is 100% offline, so it never connects to the internet. Uh, so if you create your keys on this device, yeah. a hacker can never steal it because a hacker can never make a connection and try to get it off. The only thing they can do is they can try to brute force it, which is impossible. That's sort of the idea of uh, how blo our blockchain is based on. Private keys are yeah. uh, uncompromisable. Um, and the second product we built was a uh, new backup because today's status quo backup is a paper wallet. So if you lose this beautiful device, you are allowed to do so because you actually only have to, re have to rely on that backup. You can buy a new one, you enter, import your key again, and everything's back. So Today's status quo of paper wallets is almost mind-blowingly wrong. And so we decided to build something new there as well. It's called Graphene. It's a stainless steel solution. So it withstands like any kind of extreme circumstance, like a house fire. Mm -hmm. um, and we also encrypted it and we made it recoverable. So even if you lose that part, if you lose your backup, you can still get it back. Um, and then thirdly, we have our mobile app, which is basically sort of, uh, the, as this thing is fully offline, the way we interact with it is we have a camera on the, the backside we can show QR codes here, and we basically interact with the app and the device by showing QR codes to each other. Um, but so never at any point in time is your private key compromised or, or let's say, communicated anywhere. Um, so this is actually the most extreme you can go when it comes to your security. So it's highly protected. Um, yeah. And yes. And we were also able to certify um, the operating system of the device. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the whole overarching secure OS is EAL7 certified. That means uh, if you think about security layer, uh, security levels, there's seven levels in the world. Um, the I would say the the best banking platform is five, maybe six. The best hardware wallet today in the market is five. Uh, we have seven on the full overarching secure operating system. It's the only financial product in the world that actually has that level of security. So that's how far we went. We built everything from scratch, from the chips, uh, let's say from the chipset and then the the circuit board to even uh, coding the whole firmware from scratch. So we didn't use an existing mobile operating system or something, which is a sort of honeypot for attacks. And uh, we, we really built everything with that idea of needs to be secure. And then at the same time, it all needs to be hidden behind the, a, a slick Small. user interface uh, in a touchscreen experience. Yeah. yeah. What makes the Engrave Zero um, stand out among the, your other competitors? Yeah, so if you would talk about hardware wallets, cold wallets as a, yeah. as a segment, um, our device has been built with, uh, like I mentioned, two very important uh, uh, things back in our head. One is usability needs to be 21st century. So how do we interact today uh, with the online world? It's by swiping and tapping. So you can see this uh, screen we have here. It is a touch screen. You can basically... Uh, tap on any of these coins you can see you can swipe through it you can uh, every, everything is is super fast simple and everybody knows how to swipe and tap um, but at the same time even my grandmother yeah even your grandmother so the and the, the, the second thing about it is that it is um, so it's it's a device that has been built from scratch with one sole purpose being maximum security device so it's military grade tamper proof it's made out of high quality metal there is a fingerprint sensor on the back there is a, a, a camera to make to actually do the qr code interaction and that with the qr code interaction also means that the zero as a device is actually 100 percent offline so it, there is no capability of connecting it to over usb over bluetooth over over any kind of connection method that exists today it is air gap 100 percent um, and so the only way we interact with the online world, with our app or with the, let's say, MetaMask, is by using QR codes. 
uh, which is something that everybody knows. Everybody knows how to use it. It's intuitive. It's fast, and uh, all of that is packaged in a in a in a, in, a, in a device that is actually EAL seven secure, uh, which is the highest security certification in the world. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you think about it, it it's the, the most extreme you can actually go when it comes to innovation of the device and usability of, of the device. And um, yeah, for us, this is only part of the solution, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when we looked at step zero of the whole idea of I'm a decentralized user, I need to interact with the digital world. We realized that every solution out there is not creating the key well. So step zero is always how do you create a good key? And we realized that even in a traditional space, so in a traditional banking space, keys are not created well. And the reason for that is so every device, uh, say it's your bank security tokens, this, uh, your computer, your phone, they all have chips that are able to create private keys. Um, some are very good. Some chips, like let's say in hardware wallets these days, they have very good chips. They can make very strong keys. But the problem is, and you can easily Google search that, that they actually all have backdoors. So that means that third parties actually are able to know what your key is. And that is the last thing you want. Because if you start like that, it's game over before you begin. So what we've done is we use the chip, but we also, during the key generation process, ask you for your fingerprint. Your fingerprint, so biometrics become part of your key. Mm -hmm. We measure the light intensity through the camera. Light entropy is considered one of the best sources of randomness so to make strong keys. And we take that into account together with what comes from the chip to make your key. Mm -hmm. And then we actually do sort of a bit of a gamification where we interact, you interact offline with your device, you see the key, you play with it. And by doing that, you sort of create a key that only you have seen in a 100% offline setting mm -hmm. with a device where you also added external entropy, so to say. And that's how we make your key. And that's that's the, the first part we've done about uh, creating what is called the engraved perfect key, which is a patented key. And we pull that completely through the whole idea of how do you make a backup or backup graphene uses this specific kind of key to actually make it more secure um, than just writing it down on a piece of paper or putting your 24 words on a little metal plate and and still having them all together so if somebody finds that plate they know what your key or what your keys in our case the backup is encrypted uh, so it's impossible for anybody to know what your keys even if they find the backup uh, so yeah it's really an end-to-end -end solution that we have uh, that we have built there Obviously, um, there is a whole, um, yeah, the whole different, a, a whole range of milestones that we that we went through so far, and at the same time, you always still feel like, yeah, we're still at the beginning, right? Every time you do something, it might be something major. You still think, okay, but now we we're still at the beginning. Um, so for us, I think what's relevant to mention is we developed the whole product suite. Mm -hmm. The whole product suite is already out in the market. So we have started shipping in November 2021. Uh, all of the pre-orders, in the meanwhile, we have new orders coming in. The shop is open uh, for good since last week. Before that, we were, had to close the shop once in a while because of too much demand compared to how much we could uh, we could offer the audience at that time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, milestones for me are, we're live in the okay, Let's say we developed a solution. We set up the full supply chain. It's, took, by the way, completely done in Belgium. So maximum security in Belgium, uh, very much uh, quality approach and also uh, geopolitical risk. Well, for us, the forest factory we have is three hours away on a, on a car, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the fact that we have uh, quite some good sales figures so far and that users actually really, really like the device. Eh? If when we ask our users, how happy are you? Mm -hmm. They're very happy. And the beautiful thing about that is the device we've shipped is sort of an empty Tesla, right? So it's the first version of a Tesla. And of course, there are already a lot of cool functionalities, coin support. But every few, uh, every so often, we update it with more firmware. So the device actually becomes better and better over time. Yeah. Whereas the security and so on is already uh, the best in class. Um, so if customers are already happy right now, they will only become more happy uh, one, once the device becomes even more powerful than what it mm -hmm. can do right now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think how important that the retail investor to the crypto assets space? Yeah. I, for me, the retail investor is um, almost crucial to crypto. And the reason why I say that, the reason why we built this first mm -hmm. for the B2C segment is because, let's say before November 2020 or October 2020, uh, before uh, that time, there was no 
Tesla announcing we're going to buy Bitcoin for $1.5 billion or a PayPal saying I'm going to support it for 345 million customers we have. It was all about uh, the speculation basically in the very, very beginning um, or let's say they believe in the technology, then speculation and so on. So the market g gained or, or became the size it is, uh, or at least was to a certain point, purely because of the B2C customer. And so we started in 2018, which was, well, the beginning of a big bear market. Eh? Bitcoin crashed from 20,000, more or less, till 3,000. In the middle of that bear market, when it was at 6,000, we said, we're going to build something. Um, we're going to take our time. And by the next sort of bull uh, market, we will, we will be ready. And we typically saw like the cycles of two-year bear, two-year bull, and, and more or less like that. Um, and we took the time to actually actually build, build it fully, full-fledged out by by then and in that in those timings there were only p2c customers so to say um and the beauty of course is that the form factor the security mm -hmm. the usability is already there yeah. what we need to do is we need to support the business requirements so if you have a company and you say like i want to have five managers out of nine sign a transaction and then it is and then it can go out uh, that's almost uh, child's play for us, right? If you compare it, at least relatively speaking, to what we have done so far um, mm -hmm. for our developers, that is relatively easy. So going into B2B will be more of a platform play where you use Zero as a signer. Um, yeah, but uh, in a nutshell, B2C is super important, but it's not the end game, right? B2B is mm -hmm. potentially much more bigger than B2C. And for us, it was more like, let's also put it like this, if you want to be top of mind of, of, of let's say everybody in the space yeah. you need to go b2c first um, because you don't know who's who's serving let's say your favorite supermarket huh? but you do know your favorite supermarket your favorite supermarket is b2c but their suppliers you don't know them so if you want to be, become the suppliers of your favorite supermarket mm -hmm. might be good if you first serve you and then you're like i know this company or i want to do something for my company with a security company who should i turn to and the first uh, brands that come to mind are those B2C uh, brands. So that's why we we found it pretty important to serve the retail customer. What best form of partnership to uh, engrave and what kind of uh, partnerships you are looking for in yeah. the future? Yeah, so the best uh, way to form a partnership with engrave is uh, actually we have on the website we have uh, engrave.io mm -hmm. we have um, a section where you're about us uh, or, or where you can actually choose like I'm an investor I'm from the press I'm uh, I, I'm looking for a partnership and you can just fill in a small form and we will be immediately in touch with uh, our partnership team um, and I think it's um, yeah at this point where we are going from development stage we had the supply chain stage shipping it all out we're now going into sort of a uh, acceleration mode, uh, like an inflection point when it comes to growth. Mm -hmm. So it's really the perfect time to make, to forge the right partnerships. Uh, I think one that is relevant to mention, for example, is with uh, was with Boson Protocol, at Ouroboros and so on. So the, in the Metaverse Fashion Week of Decentraland a few weeks ago, we were one of the main partners. Uh, so we actually have a shop in the Metaverse uh, right now where you can buy our devices <laughs> effectively there, or you can even buy you know goodie, goodies, uh, uh, early virtual goodies. Um, so we're really looking into that metaverse narrative a lot. We really like it. Um, obviously, we will be supporting NFTs in the next uh, firmware update of the device. So yeah, I mean, when it, when it comes to partnerships, we right now we are pretty open to receiving, and we will see what we like more or what we like less. Uh, so yeah. So you don't have any like preferences? For... It depends. Like uh, we're working on obviously uh, integrating with uh, several hot wallets right now. Um, so that's that's something we are typically looking for, but we're also going to support uh, crypto on-ramp uh, quite soon. So, I mean, we're really working on a lot of different aspects. So if you think from a, the perspective of the user, what do you want to do with your wallet? You want to be able to buy crypto, you want to be able to do token swaps, you want to be able to uh, interact with your favorite hot wallets and make it more secure. So yeah, I think the important thing is we are able to add a very interesting, very easy to use security layer to what you typically do. So if you would be using MetaMask, for example, it's best to use uh, a device that meta keys offline and that also signs transactions offline and never exposes your private keys. Versus if you have a hot wallet and the private keys were given to you by the hot wallet, that's much more of a security risk for your portfolio. So um, you have to see a bit more like projects or, or 
uh, that that need this level of security layer and think it that makes sense that they, yeah. it's easy to just uh, just come to talk to us basically yeah, yeah. so the last questions but not least so what is the plan for engrave and yourself as well yeah mm, maybe to summarize that so our big hairy audacious goal as we call it is we want to uh, protect 500 million users with our technology between now and the next let's say 10 years mm -hmm. uh, so that's really what we strive for in terms of um, uh, mission as, we, as i mentioned before for us it's really like we want to empower the user to um, master their wealth and by doing that they can actually do the things they they really want to focus on right you don't want to think about your money all the time you just want to make it work for you and you want to do yeah. whatever it is you want to do so it's it's really all, all always about freedom uh, we find that very important um, and that's that's how we how we intend to to give it to people mm -hmm. yeah. thanks for watching this video if you like the content please like comment and subscribe and thank you for our guest Ruben it's my pleasure to speaking with you today and see you guys next time bye Cheers.